हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो इन दिस वीडियो वी वुड बी डिस्कसिंग विद द टू इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट फ्रॉम मॉड्यूल फाइव विच आर पेंडिंग दैट इज रिलेटेड टू यागी उड़ा अरे एंटेना एज वेल एज पैराबोलिक रिफ्लेक्टर एंटेना ओके सो इन डिटेल अबाउट सम ऑफ द पैरामीटर रिलेटेड टू दीज टू वी आर गोइंग टू बी डिस्कसिंग ओके so stay tuned or do watch the video till the end and don't uh, forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel okay so let us start now with the concept of yagi uda array antenna so this is the basic structure of an yagi uda array antenna okay you guys might have seen this this is not uh, the newest new antenna it was used in the older older times okay during the 80s 90s and all to uh, adjust the what to say uh, the cable right of uh, used to turn the antenna right With which consists of these lines and all, so that be, that is basically the Yagi Uda antenna. Okay, so these lines are basically the uh, driven elements, which are also called as dipole antennas, which are divided into different set of directors. Okay, so these lines, which represent uh, the uh, starting from the biggest length, and it goes and and when it and when it goes on, it becomes smaller, right? So with respect to their wavelengths, it would be decreasing, and it would be having one fixed length of point three one lambda at each instance. and these lines are called as yagi uda array directors okay so these are these are the directors and the first uh, element which is uh, uh, next to the yagi uda array that is called as the driven element or the dipole antenna okay and of this first big line you see here right that is called as the reflector which has a fixed length here and uh, that length value is given as 0.475 lambda okay so that it has the fixed length and in total the complete length, length in terms of wavelength is given by 1.5 lambda okay so this is the basic structure of this yagi uda array so please note it down now let us see what do you mean by this yagi uda array if one of the dipole is energized and another antenna is placed nearby then current is induced in it and gives the resultant pattern which is slightly different from the individual antenna that is here the current pattern would be differently would be shared in a different manner with respect to different sets of directors okay the current pattern won't remain the same that is uh, when the uh, functioning uh, takes place in the reflector side and in, and when it passes through all the directors one by one with respect to each uh, instances the current pattern would be changing okay for here the, there would be one set of current pattern here there would be one set here here and here like this the current patterns won't be the same for the complete antenna it would be differently distributed evenly distributed with respect to the length of the uh, directors and it would be evenly distributed and the signal would be transmitted equally okay so this is one difference with respect to yagi uda array you need to be noting it down next is the antenna which is placed in front of the dipole is called director as i've told you and those directors are also called as parasitic elements okay so what do you mean by parasitic elements basically what they do is they are simply the parasites through which these uh, signals are getting attenuated and these are getting uh, acted upon okay so these these are the basic uh, uh, thing through which this complete yagi uda array is depending on so that's why they are called as parasitic elements okay so yeah now at resonance the dipole length is slightly less than lambda by 2 so this is the basic dipole length with respect to the fixed length we have seen that is basically in this case it is lambda by 2 and the director length is nearly equal to the length of the dipole okay so the above principle of yagi's array is used to form the yagi uda antenna so these what are all of the principles which i have told till now those are responsible for the formation of this yagi uda antenna okay so the yagi uda antenna has a folded dipole number of directors and besides the reflector it is uh, besides the reflector is placed behind the dipole that is whose length is made slightly greater than the half wave dipole so the yagi uda's antennas uh in between i've told you right just after the reflector it has one uh, uh, reflected dipole and that is called as uh, short dipole or half wave dipole which is slightly greater than the half wave dipole length okay so it would be basically used to, to balance out the complete antenna okay so the reflector provides positive reactance whereas the directors provide negative reactance so the, basically there are two components present in this antenna one is the reflector and the director okay the react the reactances should be cut out uh, cut out together because one side of the reflector is having the 
positive reactants and in the director side we are having the negative reactants so that's why those would be inversely proportional to each other attracting them and they, they would be cancelling it out okay so that's why the directory proportion would be very very negligible in case of yagi uda antenna okay so the directors behave like reactive elements so they re-radiate the energy falling on them to increase forward directivity in horizontal plane okay so by using several parasitic elements in the array the highly directional radiation pattern can be obtained array acts like end fire array so the array pattern whatever developed developed in this yagi uda antenna that array pattern is similar to that of the end fire array so that's why the uh, directional propagation is towards the axis of the yagi uda array antenna okay so these these were the basic fundamentals and the construction steps which is needed to build an yagi uda antenna so please note it down so now let's get to some applications of this antenna this is used to track signals from tv or satellite okay as i've told in the ancient times this yagi uda array was used frequently in order to capture the uh, or tracking the signals for tv or satellite purposes okay so this is one basic application you need to be noting it next point is note that yagi uda antenna with five or six elements gives a 10 db gain if elements are 9 or 10 it would be 13 db gain so the basic range of the yagi uda antenna is between 10 to 13 db gain so these things you need to be knowing okay so these are the things which comes under yagi uda antenna so this much is enough if they ask the question related to yagi uda antenna if you write this much they would be definitely giving you the marks okay they won't be asking it for uh, uh, 10 marks and all maximum 5 to 6 marks they would be asking this question okay so this much this much if you write it's enough now let's get to the concept of parabolic reflectors parabolic reflector antenna here also we are having some uh, feeding techniques under uh, parabolic reflector and some important types of parabolic reflectors we are going to see with respect to the cassie grain feeding okay what do you mean by that we'll see now so what do you mean by this parabolic reflectors you see here in case of this parabolic reflectors the frequency of operation is between 1000 hertz to 1000 megahertz so it would be indicating that the bandwidth is very high in case of this parabolic reflectors it would be working on the larger bandwidth and uh, uh, reducing to uh, which in turn would be giving you multiple signals okay so under this uh, term we are having one important concept called as collimation okay what do you mean by this collimation you see here the process of converting spherical or circular wave fronts in the reverse process is called as fo uh, focusing and that focusing technique which is happening in the standard process is called as collimation technique okay so these parabolic reflectors are either collimators or focusing devices so this is the basic uh, focusing or uh, with respect to a focal length of uh, the parabolic reflectors we have drawn one side angle through which this can be represented you see here a metallic plate with parabolic curvature is called as the parabolic reflect reflector so this is in this way the uh, reflector is drawn with respect to the directrix and focus so this is the complete focal length and this is the ver vertex and this is the axis of the parabolic reflection like this it would be uh, it, it would the, the ray would be entering the antenna and it would be reflecting towards all the sides of the antenna it would be going towards the surface okay so this is the inner surface with respect to focal length form with respect to the principal focus and the plane of observation you could be observing all the radiation changes okay so note this down so from this geometry we would be getting the value of r is equal to 2l divided by 1 plus cos theta where this 2L stands for total distance traveled by the wave along the axis. Okay. Yeah. Now for any angle, the total distance traveled would be the same. The power after reflection would be a planar wave front. So the after reflection is planar wave front. Why? Because uh, after reflection, whatever the signals we obtain, right? Those are not in the aligned manner. Okay. So they would be spread in different surfaces. So that's why it is called as a planar wave front. Okay. So now let's get to some of the types of parabolic reflectors. One is called as paraboloid and another term is called as cylindrical parabolic system. This is the basic structure of a paraboloid. It would be, uh, it would be like a circular shape with one uh, sphere and we are having the area, parabolic area which is called as aperture and we are having one point source attached to this paraboloid. Okay. Next is the cylindrical parabolic system. It is in the shape of the cylinder which consists of one line source here. Uh, in case of paraboloid, there was a point source. In case of cylindrical parabolic system, we are having one line source and the aperture. Okay. 
Now let's see the paraboloidal reflectors. Here, the surface generated by the revolution of parabola around its axis is called as paraboloid. So this is the basic definition of the paraboloid. An isotropic source is placed at the focus. So, so this point source is the basic isotropic source which is used in, with respect to this reflectors. Okay. Now, this is the field pattern generated with respect to parabolic reflectors. Okay. So how this is done with respect to the uh, parabolic reflector and we are using the primary pattern here which is generated which is in the circular shape why because it is the inner curvature right so that's why the circle will be getting generated here with respect to the isotropic source kept here and like this it takes the shape of the parabolic reflector and the uh, low ma major lobes will be getting formed and this is the secondary pattern and this is the primary pattern with respect to this reflector okay so this is the basic field pattern with respect to this uh, parabolic reflector which you need to be noting it down okay so note this down here the value of L here the length would be calculated by N lambda by 4 okay so here one thing you need to be noting is that whatever this length is there right it should be odd number of N lambda by 4 terms because it should be appearing in same phase and tend to reinforce in the central region of the reflected wave okay so that's why since it would be have it should be of different phases it would be initially of different phases because it, it it is moving around the circle right so in order to attain same phase this is the basic relation which we use that is n lambda by 4 okay so it would be turning on the circle with respect to four patterns generated and it would be uh, repeating its structure okay so this is basically a uh, uh, principle under short dipole that is you see here a short dipole small loop helix can be formed uh, can be placed at the focus hence here a short dipole can be placed at the focus point so the focus point here in this case is this point here okay so this is the basic focus point through which the uh, reflected portion uh, signals are getting generated okay so here the offset feeding technique which we are using is as i have told you in the beginning that is called as Cassegrain grain feeding okay in this what the basic uh, uh, operation of this is is most commonly used in this horn source is placed at the vertex and it generates a pencil beam required to track the radar okay so the pencil beam is basically a beam pattern which is formed uh, which uh, obtains the shape of a pencil why because you see here the uh, lobes are narrower and the secondary pattern lobe is getting wider so that's why because of the surface of the parabolic reflector it would be forming this structure and it is called as a pencil beam with respect to the radar tracking okay so that is cassie grain feeding technique which is used in this in order to generate this pattern okay so yeah these are the things under parabolic reflector antenna you need to note note it down so yeah that's all for this video guys uh, please uh, go through these concepts these are very important okay thank you